It's mock draft season, some of my favorite time of year. I love Christmas, I love draft day and mock draft season because this is where my hopes are up. I mean, my team hasn't all gotten injured yet. This is where I get to construct that team that potentially will get injured later on in the future. But for right now, it's fucking perfect. Nothing's nothing's going to fail me. So I'm excited to start this off. I'm going to do a 12-man PPR mock. I'm starting at the 8 just for shits and giggles. See what it looks like because drafting 1 through 4 is easy. You're going Jefferson. And you're going Chase, you're going probably uh, Eckler, you're going CMC, you know, that's easy. Let's start at the 12 and see where shit really gets confusing. So I thought it'd be fun to record that for you today. By the way, I'm Troy Michael. If you want to join me on my podcast, that is Year Round Fantasy Football, you can follow me on just about any platform or even here on this channel if you like the YouTube stuff. So let's just jump on in again, 12 man. This is very basic. One quarterback, two wide receiver, two running back. You got a flex, you got a tight end, blah, blah, blah. You've been here before. There's no super flex i'll do those later on so here we go we're going to start off and let's see what happens man jefferson shocker cooper cup off the board at number two that's crazy cmc doesn't go in the top four that's insane to me austin eckler jamar chase christian mccaffrey at the five tyree kill and travis kelsey at the six i was going to grab travis travis is kind of my little secret the guy's a stud and anytime you have travis kelsey in your team you, you, you got a heads up. You got like a 10, 12 point head start on your team or on your opponent every single week. I mean, Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey, it's almost always going to be Travis. And that's the only guy who's got Mark Andrews or potentially occasionally Kittle. Kittle's been so hot and cold. As a Niner fan, it hurts my soul. But the guy's a good blocker. And to be honest with you, he, he gives a ton of value to the team that way. But it's not always good for fantasy football, so it sucks. But when you have Travis Kelsey on your team, you start out with a, with, it's like a Having a 12-point handicap or only in the opposite direction, you get to play every team better than they would have. Because what's left? Evan Ingram, Kincaid, I mean, um, Dustin Knox, Schultz. I mean, fuck. I mean, Travis is going to outscore all those guys. And who's going to really score more? Jefferson, Tyreek, Jefferson Chase. I mean, come on. We know where the value is. It's at the tight end this year. Grab Travis if you can, and he's off the board at seven. That sucks. That's who I wanted to pick. So looking down, I am looking at, um, I got Jonathan Taylor, Bichon, Barkley, Diggs. Looking at just running backs alone. I really like Barkley. I would pick Barkley, but let's be honest. Have you heard anything positive coming from camp? I haven't. He's talking about pulling a fucking levy on Bell and not even playing. So that scares the shit out of me. With my first pick, I want it to be safe. I want to get that warm feeling that it's not high risk. It's not high uh, injury risk. It is a nice guy who's going to be the foundation for my team. That would have been Barkley, but again, high risk. Jonathan Taylor, the reason I've been talking myself out of him all offseason is this. What happened to that, that that offensive line? Like even when he was healthy, he didn't look great. I think he had one superstar week last week. Um, I don't trust the quarterback situation. I don't think they're going to be in a ton of scoring positions. So I'm a little leery on Jonathan Taylor this year. Um, if looking at this board, wide receivers, I love Diggs, but he's been throwing a little hissy fit in camp. CeeDee Lamb, way too fucking early. So it's Taylor, B. Sean, Barkley, Henry. So to me, it's really just because of the issues with Barkley, with the issues with Henry getting a little bit up there in age. For me, it's really between B. Sean, Jacobs. And you know what? I don't know what's going on with the Raiders. I know that I would rather have Derek Carr as a Niner fan than Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Derek Carr is a hell of a lot more talented. And he's gone. And now you got Garoppolo. So Garoppolo is certainly not a passing threat in that uh, division, let alone at all. He, he found a way to work with Shanahan, and now he's not going to have that. So with that said, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go for the blind upside of Bichon. Bichon, young, healthy. I don't think he's going to be a health risk. Um, the Falcons ran the ball like gangbusters last year's without him, without a super talented running back. And you would know that if you had any of the running backs last year for the Falcons, they're fucking amazing. All they want to do is run the ball. They ran the ball more than anyone else. And here's the cool fact. When they were playing from behind, they ran the ball almost just as much. It's like, fuck, they just run the goddamn ball. I think I'm going to have to gamble. I think I'm going to have to go for Bichon. If I was in the draft, I would take Bichon over Taylor, Bichon over Barkley, only because Barkley might sit out. Otherwise, I'd grab Barkley in a fucking second. Uh, Henry, man, he broke my heart last year. He didn't play in the championship, and because of that, I took runner-up. That broke my heart because then I had to have – I went from Henry to starting Connor. It's like, oh, that sucks. Um, Jacobs, again, I told you why I don't want it. So I'm jumping out. I'm going to grab Bichon right out the gate. 
Come on out next, Wint Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, Stefan Diggs and Lamb. What a way to start the draft with two really high-end wide receivers at the 12. I like that, especially if Diggs doesn't do anything stupid this year. Pat Mahomes, I think it's a tad fucking early for Pat, but whatever. Josh Jacobs, uh, he's off the board. I think that's a good value right there at uh, 203. And then A.J. Brown. So now I'm looking at Pollard, Chubb, Hall, Harris, Stevenson, ETN. Let's see what we got for wide receivers. Devontae Adams. But again, you know, I got a little bias against uh, uh, Garoppolo. I don't think he could feed the guy anywhere near as good as Carr could. Um, St. Brown, I love St. Brown. I love Garrett Wilson. So to me... I got one guy on this board who I've, I'm in love with right now. And um, this guy is on a team that had a major quarterback improvement. I think that you are actually going to have to worry about Amari Cooper now. They're going to have to fear the passing game of um, of Cleveland. And I think Chubb is going to wreck shit because he's just got a major upgrade. Good offensive line. Good quarterback. I didn't say good quarterback person, but good quarterback in terms of football. Um, you got to fear the pass. I mean, when you don't fear the pass, you stack the box. When you stack the box, Chubb can't get the distance. I think I'm leaning Chubb. For me, it's between Chubb and probably St. Brown and Garrett Wilson. But I think after Chubb, there's a huge drop off with skill set. Pollard, I mean, yeah, I... That would be a good pickup too, but if I had my choice right now, which I do, I'm going to go Chubb over Pollard. I do like Pollard's upside, but again, I'm, I don't know, man. He he dislocated that that knee or that uh, that ankle. It didn't look good last year. That's it. I'm going to go Chubb. I'm starting out with fucking two super backs. I got Bichon. I got Nick Chubb, and I think that's a great foundation for drafting at the eight to start out my PPR league. Uh, Jalen Waddle's off the board next. Uh, Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, Josh Allen, Amos St. Brown. Um, we have Tony Pollard, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts? The back of the second? Oh, my God. Um, Mark Andrews, Brees Hall. I kind of wish Brees fell. Uh, T. Higgins, uh, Stevenson, Travis Etienne, Najee Harris. Najee Harris in the third. Wow. And Ken Walker. Ken Walker scares the shit out of me. They paid big to have a running back by committee to grab that other cat in the second round. And where they get Walker in the second round. And now you don't have to worry about Penny. I think it's going to be a strong one-two punch. But, man, to have a foundational running back... And then they'll be worried that he's going to have all of his carries siphoned. Kind of scares me a little bit. So let's look at wide receivers since I put myself into a fucking hole. And now I almost have to pick one. Kind of have to. We have Chris Olave. We have Smith, Metcalf, uh, Samuel, Keenan Allen, and Amari Cooper. I certainly don't want that many Cleveland Browns. Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs has been lining up as wide receiver for Detroit all over the place. They spent huge draft, uh, draft capital on him. They are very excited about him. I'm not. I, I think that's a, that's a high price to pay for a guy that you don't know is going to be the workhorse. So I'm skipping over that. I do like Aaron Jones. I do love Mixon this year. He potentially could have some legal issues. I guess he pulled a, allegedly pulled a gun on some kids playing Nerf Wars in his backyard or something. That's kind of crazy shit. Uh, I do love Dobbins. I do love Pierce. Uh, Chris Olave. I mean, fuck. This is going to be tough. So I see Chris Olave as the new Devontae Adams. We know Derek Carr can sustain a wide receiver one. Uh, I certainly don't think Chris Olave is as talented as uh, Devontae Adams. But let's be honest, you're drafting him in the third. You're not paying that first round pick. If, if Derek Carr was there, Devontae Adams would have went probably where Stephon Diggs went. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, I do like Smith, but let's be honest, he's going to get maybe 25% of the uh, market share. Um, I do like Metcalf a lot, but Tyler Lockett is amazing and you could always get him like the seventh round and he only scores like 80 points less over the entire year over Metcalf so keep that in mind uh Debo Samuel I mean I don't know man too many mouths to feed for the Niners too many question marks for the quarterback I'm skipping over that I like Keenan Allen but this is a tad early I think I'm going to gamble on the upside of Chris Olave yeah I'm certainly going to do that what do we got for quarterbacks nobody jumps out to me I'm certainly not paying a third round pick for any of those chuckleheads tight ends at this point, because I missed out on Travis Kelsey, because I didn't find value with Mark Andrews, I'm probably going to, my last pick of the draft might be a tight end. Anyway, with all that said, I'm going to grab me Mr. Chris Olave. Boom, he's off the board. 
DK Metcalf, Devonta Smith, Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow, two Joes in a row, um, Keenan Allen, Debo Samuel, TJ Hawkinson, and Aaron Jones all off the board. And now I could kind of pick what I want. I could go for wide receiver. I can go nuts. Looks like uh, Lamar Jackson dropped even further. Uh, Jameer Gibbs is there. Amari Cooper, Hop. Even though Hop doesn't even have a wide receiver, it looks like his average ADP is in the fourth fucking round. I love it. Um, looking at wide receivers, they got Cooper, Hopkins, Ridley, McLaurin, Moore. Uh, none of those guys jump out at me, except for probably Cooper. But I already like, how many fucking Browns can you have on a team? That just breaks my heart. I don't want any more goddamn Browns, but I might have to. Jameer Gibbs, Dobbins, Pierce. Okay. I know who I'm going to go for, and I know it sucks at the goal line because Lamar steals his touchdowns all the time. But let's be honest, uh, Dobbins got healthier as the season went on. We thought he'd start out like gangbusters. He certainly did. Hell, I don't even think he started to like week four. But once he did, he was average, and then he was better and better and better, and then he ended up really strong. I, to me, I think that's going to be the pick because I think Baltimore is going to have a lot more scoring opportunities than Pierce. Uh, then Sanders, then Alexander Madison. Alexander Madison, let's be honest, we've all had him. And Cook went down, and we thought we had an RB1, but he wasn't. He was like a low-end RB2. It's just, he's just not the talented uh, as talented as Cook. Cooper, man, I kind of want Cooper. Oh, but I fucking hate the Browns. I got this guy in my fantasy league who fucking loves the Browns. And if he knew that I literally drafted two Browns, he'd like cream all over himself. Uh, if DeAndre Hopkins had a real quarterback, I'd grab him right here. Oh, uh, this sucks. Do I want Dobbins or do I want Cooper? I'm going to go Cooper because let's be honest, who fed um, DeAndre Hopkins initially? It was it was homeboy. It was uh, Deshaun Watson. I mean, again, not a fan of him as a person. But if he treats Cooper the way he used to treat DeHop, I think that's a good pick. And boom, right out of the gate. I got two Browns. Not very happy about it, but the value was there. Anyway, Jameer Gibbs, George, uh, George Kittle, Justin Herbert, J.K. Dobbins, Lamar Jackson, Calvin Ridley, D. Hop finally comes off the board without a team. Um, Damian Pierce, Fields off the board, uh, Terry McLaurin, D.J. Moore, Dalvin Cook, uh, Miles Sanders, and Chris Godwin. Now I'm looking at Drake London, Christian Watsonson, um, Alexander Madison. Swift is there for Philly, Judy, Pitts. So there's a there's a handful of okay options in the fifth round, I guess. Uh, running backs, Madison. It might not be a bad spot, like I said, low-end RB2, and here we are in the fifth round. You know, and after that, there aren't too many starters. There aren't too many places to get a starting running back after that point. Uh, London, Atlanta, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't think you're going to be throwing the ball that much to really make that valuable. Christian Watson, I'm not sure if Love can really pepper him enough to really make it an exciting pick for me. Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, is, is, um, is Russell Wilson even going to be good this year? I mean, what the fuck is Russ doing? The guy drives me nuts. Like, the first time ever in fantasy football, I drafted him last year, and he was he tanked my fucking team for the first four pit, uh, first four weeks. I just, I didn't understand what was going on. And then I'm like, oh, he's fucking terrible. And that's why Pete Carroll got rid of him. Um, yep, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, with a running back. I'm going to have to go with Madison. Again, starting running back. DeAndre Swift is not a starter. Um, James Conner is a starter. But again, I think uh, Minnesota is going to have a hell of a lot more scoring opportunity than Conner. Uh, Akers would be a good pick. But I think I could probably get him in the next round. Let's see what happens. Madison comes off the board. Uh, Kyle Pitts comes next. Drake London. Jerry Judy. Cam Akers. Damn it. Little sneaky fucker. I wanted him. Uh, Christian Watson. Dallas Goddard. DeAndre Swift. And Michael Pittman. Now, here we are. I got Connor. I got Jamal Williams. I got Alvin Kamara, who's probably going to be suspended for the first couple of games. Um, surprisingly, Richard White is a starter and shows Pacheco. So I think I might go uh, wide receiver here because I love Marquise Hollywood Brown. D hops out of the picture. Kyler's not a bad quarterback. When he's not playing Call of Duty all day, Kyler's a stud. I really like Kyler. Uh, their defense is shit. They're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And I really think I'm going to go Marquise and hope. And hope either Connor, 
Rashard White or Isaiah Pacheco make it back around to me. I think that would be a great pick in the seventh round. Let's gamble. Marquise is off the board. Brandon Ayuk comes next. Trevor Lawrence, James Conner, Javante Williams, Tyler Lockett. Fuck, what I say about Tyler? Ah, oh, he's always a value. Uh, Alvin Kamara comes off. Rashard White and Pacheco. Oh, fuck, that one team, team one, took both my guys. But this is why we mock, to see if we're going to gamble, to see if the gamble is worth taking Marquise Brown. So should be a hoop. Uh, Darren Waller, uh, Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, little wide receiver run, uh, Deontay uh, Johnson, Mike Evans, and Prescott off the board in the seventh. Man, I'm heartbroken. So now we got Montgomery, who was hired to be the, the workhorse back for Detroit, and then they went and got Jameer Gibbs. But again, if you read the, the reports, he's lining up as a wide receiver. He's all over the place. He's like your little super gadget player, so it might not be a bad pick. Um, we have um, Jackson Smith and Jigba, JSN. We have Traylon Burke, uh, Addison, Pickens. Man, at this point, I know I only got two... Um, no, I guess I got three wide receivers. I kind of want to grab Montgomery. I, he's a great back. He's not bad. And Jameer Gibbs, if he's going to be their little gadget player with a Moss St. Brown, he might be the goal line guy. I mean, Jameer ain't as big as Montgomery. Montgomery's a big back. Fuck it. I'm going to grab Montgomery. Boom, he's off the board. Let's let's sum up my team really quick. We got Bichon. We got Chubb. We got Chris Olave and Amari Cooper. I fucking love it. I think that's great. Starting at the eighth. Um, um, Alexander Madison, Marquise Hollywood Brown. I, hell, Marquise could outscore Chris Olave if uh, um, Kyler is their starting uh, quarterback and if their defense is shit, which it probably is. I mean, they're going to have to try to win games. You got to do that with some wide receiver. And, uh, and D-Hop's gone. And then, of course, we got Dave Montgomery. I think he's not necessarily a high upside, but I think he's a solid play um, during bye weeks. Uh, Deshaun Watson comes off the board. Tua, Traylon Burks, Jordan Addison, James Cook. Um, we have George Pickens, JSN, and A.J. Dillon. Now, looking at my team, we're already in the eighth round. I, um, I, I'm pretty well balanced. I got four wide uh, four running backs, three wide receivers. Let's see what we got for uh, we got Antonio Gibson. We got Brian Robinson. We got Jamal Williams. Remember, Jamal Williams is probably going to be the starter in uh, New Orleans until Alvin Kamara comes off. Uh, we got Dotson. We got Kadarius Tony, We got uh, Cooks, quarterbacks. Uh, we got the, that, that rookie Richardson, Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, all these guys are good. I mean, look at all these uh, quarterbacks. This is why I'm not reaching on any of them this year, except for maybe Josh Allen or Pat, if they fall in my lap in like the third or the fourth, which they probably won't. I mean, look at that. Uh, Kirk Cousins, super solid. Aaron Rodgers, maybe he'll be good. I'm almost worried about him, but, you know, it can't be worse than last year. And he got better as the year went on. Uh, we got Danny Dimes, Geno Smith, Jared Goff, Russell Wilson. I mean, Kyler fucking Murray all the way down there. And that's why I'm not touching a single guy until probably like the 10th. Because a lot of these teams are going to start grabbing their second quarterback here in a minute. So I'm just going to load up. I'm going to load up for depth. And I'm going to go with a high upside play. They talk about Kadarius Tony like he could be the new number one. If this guy stays healthy, he's by far the most talented wide receiver on the team if I could be the number one wide receiver and of course we know we got Travis we'll we'll call him the number two wide receiver because Travis gets the kind of volume a wide receiver should um I'll take the number two for the Chiefs so we'll try that out I, I don't trust the quarterback for Washington <coughs> excuse me I need a cough button um Cooks I mean what is he the number three out there I'm gonna go with Tony for a potential number one even though we all know it's a number two beside uh behind Kelsey Antonio Gibson went next Jonah Dotson Evan Ingram Juju Smith-Schuster Pratt Fryer-Muth Quentin Johnson Michael Thomas Brian Robinson Zach Charbonnet so there's that Seahawks um second round running back Jamal Williams Brandon Cooks uh Penny Dalton Schultz and Anthony Richardson off the board who the fuck got Anthony Richardson oh my gosh Ugh, kills me. I can't believe people were actually drafting him that early. Anyway, looking at all the things now. We got Njoko, Gabe Davis, Khalil Herbert. I kind of like me Khalil. Uh, Khalil Herbert. We have Kirtland Sutton, Samaja Pirine, Flowers, Cousins, Richard Bateman, blah, blah, blah. I kind of like Herbert. I think he's going to do really well out there in Chicago. Um, man. Yeah, I think that's going to end up being my pick. Gabe Davis, Sutton. I mean... 
is Russell Wilson actually going to throw the ball to Sutton this year? He has so few targets. And I already like my wide receivers. I really think I got some uh, good depth and good upside there. I think I'm going to go for even more depth at the uh, running backs because they tend to go down pretty quick. I'm grabbing Khalil Herbert. I love what he did last year. I love that supposedly Fields is, is stepping up. So if they have to worry about the passing game in Chicago, Khalil's going to have more time to run. So I love that. So we have Najoko, Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton. Uh, oh, big breakfast. Um, Kirk Cousins, Samaja P. Ryan, Daniel Jones, Rashad Bateman, and Zay Flowers. Now from here... I mean, we could kind of do what we want. I eventually am happy to grab a quarterback. I mean, I'd be happy with Smith. I mean, think about Smith, man. He's got Tyler Lockett, stud. DK Metcalf, stud. He's got JSN, physical phenom. And guess what? Their defense is fucking terrible. They're going to have to throw the ball so much. I, I would be happy with Geno Smith with this draft that I have so far. Anyway, looking back at it, I don't think I'm ready to jump and grab a quarterback. I'm probably grabbing the 11th. So at this point, I'm seeing Cole Komet. I see uh, Nkunkwo, Kincaid, Higby, uh, Dulcich. I'd be happy with really any of those guys, especially because they're almost like free picks at this point. So I'm going to grab one more depth piece. Let's see what we got. We got Miami, we got Harris, Elijah Mitchell. Should we grab the uh, insurance for CMC in case something happens? I mean, why not? If CMC goes down, I have a running back now on the best running team in football, and it cost me a 10th round pick, and I don't think I'm going to lose any value on quarterbacks or tight ends. I'm kind of thinking about Cole Komet. I'm kind of thinking about Kyler Murray. See, Geno's off. Oh, shit. Of course I fucking lose him. Hey, but what are you going to do? So we got Aaron Rodgers, Jamal Williams, Damian Harris, OBJ, Elijah Moore, Adam Thielen, Alan Lazard, Jacoby Myers, Geno Smith. Man, it's all right. Kyler's still out there. Cole Komet, Dalton Kincaid, Tyler Algiers, and Devin Singletary. At this point, I'm finally going to pull the trigger on my guy. I think out of everybody left between Goff, William, uh, Wilson, I'm going to go Kyler. I think Kyler runs enough. I think he's going to have to... I mean, shit, him or Goff, I just, fuck it. I mean, how many points did he get last year? Does it show that? I don't fucking know. I don't know how to hit all the buttons. I'm going Kyler. I like my stack with him, and I like my stack with Marquise Brown. Jarek McKinnon, uh, Akonkwo, uh, Rondell Moore, uh, Mooney. We have Higby, Foreman, Jared Goff, Russell Wilson. Thank God I picked them. If I would have missed out on all those guys, it would have broke my heart. So now I've got to grab tight end, and it kind of worked out because I really kind of wanted Greg Dulcich, to be honest with you. I think he's got a lot of upside. He had a really good year last year. If Russell does remember, he is Russell Wilson and not some other chucklehead. I think it'll go really well. I'm going to grab Dulcich, and from there I can give a fuck about my kicker and uh, – kicker and defense like I understand defense as you play the matchup it makes sense from a fantasy football point of view is you're trying to play matchups but I have been trying to get my team my team my league to get rid of kickers for like the past 10 years I just can't get rid of kickers that's all I want to do I said hey guys we'll get rid of a kicker and we'll get a flex and then it'll make all these people even more valuable and make everything more competitive and no my team my team my league fucking loves kickers they drive me nuts and if any of you guys are watching Fuck you, you drive me nuts. Anyway, let's look at my team now. I have uh, B. Sean Robinson, Nick Chubb, Chris Olave, Amari Cooper, Alexander Madison, Marquise Hollywood-Brown. Um, I have, um, I can't talk, uh, David Montgomery, uh, Kadarius Tony, Khalil Herbert, Elijah Mitchell, Kyler Murray, Greg Dulcich. So if I had to critique my team, uh, sure, I think I'm a little bit weak at wide receiver, but you know what? I love my running backs to the point where well, I'll accept it. I'll accept being weak at one position to be overly confident in another. And I know a lot of people aren't excited about Kyler Murray this year, but neither am I. I can give a fuck. This is all I care about is the fact that I got Kyler in the 11th round and last year he was a fourth or fifth round pick. What happened? Not much. I mean, he's still going to run around for his life. He's still going to throw the ball because their defense sucks. I mean, they are still professionals. He is going to have to put up points to attempt to win games. So I think Kyler is going to outperform his ADP by a shit ton. And then you could argue my uh, tight end sucks but But from my point of view, every tight end sucks but other than perhaps Andrews and Kelsey. So if you like this, if you like my content, you can follow me again on uh, um, Year Round Fantasy Football on all the podcasts or on Instagram and TikTok. I got all those things. So you can go ahead and give me a follow. You have a good day.